This week's Iron MPI, brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit, is from Epson. Yes. This one is right on time. I don't have a lot of clock and time jokes because it's a uh, Precision RTC set from Epson. Um, these RTCs, you know, what's interesting is I don't think of Epson necessarily as making chips and RTCs. Um, but they are really famous for their crystals. We use Epson crystals all the time in our devices. And so it makes sense that they take something, this is basically a you know, 3.2 by 2.5 millimeter crystal. And they're like, we're already really good at the crystal part. Let's shove an RTC chip in there. And they did. Um, so we're gonna feature the RX uh, 8901 CE, but there's also the 4901, which is the SPI version. And basically this is, you know, Epson's really good at crystals and temperature compensation for crystals. Now they've added a microcontroller, not micro, a, a silicon chip inside that acts as a real time clock and is temperature compensated, which is really important because um, this is something that people ask us about all the time is um, how can you have precision timekeeping? Um, you know, I think I was even looking, you know, Jepler, who's one of our engineers, is like, I'm a time nerd. Um, if you're a time nerd, uh, you know it. You want to have the best, most accurate time possible. Turns out that's actually pretty hard to do. Um, you know, a lot of people have used uh, chips like this, uh, temperature compensated um, uh, RTCs from Maxim. And I, I do love these chips, but I do want to mention that this is basically uh, you know, another option. So if you aren't able to get these chips because they've been really strongly affected by the chip shortage, um, or you want to try, an, you know, another vendor or something that's a little more affordable, um, this chip is a really good option. Um, so, you know, as I was kind of, you know, looking into this, I was like, well, why, you know, why is it so hard to do um, really accurate time? And I think one of the, one of the issues is that people have, um, they have uh, not misinterpretations, but, you um, they have experiences with clocks and timers around them that influence how they think time is works with electronics. And there's actually a lot of work behind the scenes to make time um, very accurate that you're like you're not even aware of. So you know even um, you know historically, if you had an alarm clock or a wall clock, it plugs into the wall. It actually uses the 60 hertz frequency of the mains in order to you know because it goes 60 hertz here or 50 hertz in um, Europe, and it uses that to power a a timer, a, a, uh, a you know, a flip flop, and a clock divider, and then that's how it gets one hertz. And what's interesting is like you know the, the sixty hertz is actually really good enough that you can have extremely accurate timekeeping because that frequency is generated by you know the power plant in your town or outside your town, um, and they can synchronize it to make it like a perfect sixty hertz. Um, and uh, you know if you look at this uh, website, Leap Second. They actually did analysis. So during peak hours, when there's a lot of power, actually the frequency kind of goes up and down a little bit. But at the end of the day, when the power usage is lower, the um, power plant will actually adjust the frequency back. Like they'll kind of like give you some extra cycles or remove some cycles or kind of tweak the frequency so that on average, it really is like extremely precise 60 Hertz. Problem is, is that a lot of people don't plug into mains voltage anymore. Uh, oftentimes you're using a switching power supply or USB, and so you don't have access to this like pre-calibrated uh, 60 hertz signal that will give you like really accurate timekeeping. So a couple of options that people have used historically are, you know, a WWVB NIST radio receiver kit. So this is a um, radio transmitter that's I think in Colorado in the United States, maybe a couple other locations. And if you have, you know, this this radio module, you can receive that signal and it'll give you extremely accurate time um, because the transmitter is, you know, atomic clock accuracy. It's like it is the NIST timekeeper. The problem is, is that honestly, all the way on the East Coast here in New York, we never got this working really well. We always had a lot of difficulty, especially inside of an apartment. You really have to have the antenna either outside or you know, pointing in the direction of Colorado or whatever in order to get good signal. Look, I bet if you're in Nebraska, it's just, you're going to get amazing signal. Um, but we had a lot of trouble here in uh, in New York City. Um, and of course, again, you do you can't have it be indoors. It has to be kind of outdoors-ish or near a window. Another way that people get accurate time is with GPS. Um, GPS also gives you you know atomic uh, clock precision. 
um, you have to face the sky with the antenna, but you know, once you get signal from there, you're, you, you get the absolute accurate time. But again, it's kind of expensive, uh, uses a lot of power. You need to synchronize with these um, uh, satellites. And then, you know, finally, if you have network capability, if you can use NTP, again, also, uh, this is a atomic clock synchronized um, timekeeping service. But all of these things, you know, the, it, the 60 hertz mains is inexpensive, but a lot of people don't connect to mains anymore because um, you're connected to a switching, through a switching power supply. But the radio, the GPS, and NTP are all very power hungry. Like you need to have internet or you need to have a, a receiver or a radio. Um, and so while those are really good ways to keep your project synchronized really well, a lot of people um, want something that's standalone. And so when you use something like a real-time clock, um, you're going to connect it to a crystal. Uh, and usually it's a 32 kilohertz, 32.768 kilohertz crystal, which means that, you know, one out of one to the, sorry, two to the 15th power times divider of the clock frequency, 32768, is one hertz and then that's your one second timer. And the circuitry that does the dividing is perfect, right? Like it's very easy to make something that divides by three, two, seven, six, eight, because again, it's a power of two. The problem is that the crystal itself has some variability. Um, even the highest quality crystals are going to have some variability of about 10 to 20 PPM, um, depending on the, the temperature, especially with temperature, but also just just natural variability because crystals aren't, you know, they don't oscillate perfectly on time. Um, you know, atomic clocks do, but they're again, extremely expensive. So, you know, you get these crystals, they're 20 PPM, you do the math, 20 parts per million, ends up being, um, you know, you calculate there's 86 something something thousand seconds per day and, you know, multiply that by the 20 over 1 million and basically it turns out to be two seconds a day of plus or minus loss. And uh, over a month, that adds up to you know almost a minute. So, um, so it's like two seconds, you know, 1.8 1.8 seconds a day. But it can also be a little bit more depending on aging and if the temperature gets very extreme. So basically, you know, you're losing up to a minute a day, a minute a month, and that can be quite a lot. It's uh, very annoying. It means you're constantly, at, you know, you have to synchronize your clock with again one of these atomic clocks, or you can go with a temperature compensated crystal oscillator, with Epson has, and what that does is it'll be able to cut it down from, you know, maybe 20 PPM to like three or even, you know, uh, two PPM, depending on if it's, if it's uh, um, commercial versus industrial temperature range. It's a little bit more expensive. You're adding in a dollar or two, but it's not as expensive as a GPS. It's not, as, it's not very power hungry. Um, the circuit is, you know, just does little tweaks here and there to, to get the, um, the oscillation to be much closer to 32.768 or it'll add or, or remove pulses to to even it out so you basically end up getting uh closer to true 32 kilohertz signal so um this is the you know this is what we've got here it's a temperature compensated crystal um with a real-time clock in it there's two versions uh i squared c spi there's also two pin options pin a and pin b i think one has frequency out, the other one has um, more event in inputs. Um, but the interesting thing is the frequency tolerance, that's what you want to look at. So for the XS series, um, you get, you know, as little as plus or minus three uh, PPM, which basically means plus or minus eight seconds. It's about, you know, one tenth, one, you know, one uh, eighth of as much variation in frequency over um, minus uh, 40C to 85C. And then for very hot temperatures, you know, it is going to be a little bit more than that. So above 85C, which again is, is very hot. It's not 85F, it's 85C um, plus or minus five. So this could be very good in, in hot environments where you want to get a um, better timing rate. And then um, it, there's an I squared C version, SPI version. There's also, you know, all the RTC stuff you'd expect. Uh, the calibrated, the temperature calibrated frequency output event input pin so you can like timestamp stuff without having to wake up separate battery and v out um, power supply can be you know 1.6 to 5.5 volts so really nice wide range wide temperature range you know auto switch from v out to v bat everything you want in your rtc and it's temperature compensated and uh, the price is really good uh, compared to many other uh, temperature compensated um, 
RTCs. You know, it's look kind of like half the price. So quite quite nice. Uh, available on DigiKey and it's in stock. Yes, that's the best part. There's yeah. a lot of them in stock, both the I squared C and the SPI version. And uh, you know, usually sometimes the companies have you know little sales videos and stuff like this this is a little different epson has a really beautiful video that goes along with this it. was so relaxing yeah. i guess felt like so much better so after watching this, this video. is really really good we rarely play you know just like here's the sales and marketing video it's actually really nice epson did a, a really good job so we are going to play it maintenance wa tesayo ni narimasu 最終的には非常に高品質な素材を要求されます。一番短くて素材が出発原料となりますんで、いい素材を作ると水晶デバイスのアドバンテージになると考えています。いい水晶を作るには原料、種水晶、釜、それと人です。何一つかけてもダメです。水晶は生きてます。Isn't that cool? I promised I wouldn't cry during an uh, MPI, but <laughs> no, I just like it was like so like yeah. peaceful, so, and, like this crystal, so beautiful. I've, I've been doing this biz with you for a while. I've never seen a video where they go through and show the process of growing crystals like this. I know, actually, I didn't realize that they. I I also thought they were mined. I for some reason I was like I didn't think like oh yes of course they'd be grown. You could grow them, but they're yeah. beautiful. I mean, like they're you know they're enormous and they're perfectly clear yeah. and. Yeah, I mean, it's like they grow them for three to six months. So it's like you have to have perfect cleanliness. Everything has to be temperature, you know, everything has to be set up to make these gorgeous, perfect crystals yeah. every single time. And they've been doing this for like, I mean, probably a hundred years. Yeah. Can we get a crystal growing machine around here? I kind of want one now. <laughs> I, I mean, Adafruit like that thing is cool. Yeah. Can we get some of that um, government money to do a crystal fab? <laughs> I don't know. They're beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, it's. And it's cool how you can tell. Like, they get one big crystal, and that that turns yeah. into millions of little uh, crystal oscillators that the, you guys Anyways. use in your circuit. So a little bit of every mm. microcontroller board that you've ever made. This came is why we crystal. like doing uh, Iron MPI because we learn something new every I didn't, single I, I really didn't know how crystals were grown, and, and now that's I do. This week's Iron MPI. Hi, Iron MPI.